Hey guys, I'm Zach Buckle and welcome back to the Farm Table West YouTube channel. Today I'm going to give you a tour of our vegetable farm here in Zone 4B, Wyoming. It is now January 29th and uh, we've been through a nice little Arctic blast about a week and a half ago where we got down to negative 32 and it was negative 20 for a good week straight and uh, I'm starting here in the Caterpillar Tunnel, which to me is the most impressive um, site on the farm right now because the uh, Caterpillar Tunnel has no heat and everything in here has survived flawlessly. So what we got behind me is spinach. Um, all this spinach has been covered with three layers of row cover, which is this white fabric you see right here. Um, actually some of it was only covered with two and what we did was harvest the majority of the spinach the, since November so from about November to right up about second week in January all of the spinach in here was harvested the first cut and then everything you see behind me is basically dormant because of that cold but it's actually just now starting to grow again and what's gonna happen is this stuff is going to explode in the next two weeks or so, maybe one week, uh, and it'll just start growing like crazy, and we're going to have a whole nother second crop of spinach in the dead of winter, which to me is just still amazing. Even though I've done this three or four times so far in my farming career, uh, it still blows my mind because this stuff looks pretty much flawless. Um, all of the dead leaves you see around the plants are basically from that cold, but also there was some rotting going on because the plants were actually too big before it got cold. And once they get big, it's much harder for the water to evaporate and all sorts of rotting issues happen. But basically it's absolutely worked perfectly. No plants died. Um, as you can see, each row of green is pretty much flawless. Um, the actual plants are alive they're just dormant i'm going to try and get a close-up here uh so you can see a little better so <clears throat> you see here this whole row of spinach is alive the growth tip right around here is perfectly good and it's just sitting here like this leaf will just double triple in size very very soon and we'll just have more spinach that we could possibly uh eat and uh, this will probably yield another at least 200 pounds of spinach. These five rows in here will yield at least another 200 round, uh, pounds of spinach before the winter is over and it goes to seed. So that is a truckload of spinach. 200 pounds is, if you charge $10 a pound in the wintertime, that's uh, $2,000 minimum. And uh, if it's, it depends on how w quickly the weather turns warm for how long that spinach is gonna last. And uh, if it stays, you know, in the 60s and not much warmer than that until like April, we might get a lot more. It's just, a, it depends on how fast it gets warm because as soon as it gets above like 70, that stuff's gonna go to seed and we'll be done and I'll have to flip it to other crops. I'm probably gonna have to do that anyway because this stuff, this greenhouse is very valuable. But it's just an incredible amount of food when you consider that's $2,000 on the second cut. We already had $2,000 worth of sales from it uh, in 2023, basically. So that's pretty incredible for that amount of space. And especially since it didn't even grow perfectly well because this is brand new soil. The nutrients aren't really there yet in the soil. Um, I'm just blown away by how great that is. And another thing that's incredible in this greenhouse is the carrots. So we have one and a half beds left from our uh, August planting, uh, basically our winter carrots, and that's still gonna be, oh, somewhere between 150 to 200 pounds of carrots left that are fresh, basically. And let me just show you how they survive. These things are just incredibly bomb-proof. And I was a little worried about it because I've never really grown carrots through negative 32 before. Uh, and this, these caterpillar tunnels don't really warm up like the normal greenhouses do because they're oriented north and south. So they don't warm up nearly as fast as the other ones. 
So there was some problems in here. I wasn't really even able to tell if they survived until like a week ago. Or actually like five days ago. But they survived and you'll see how good the quality is. Um, take a look at this. So this carrot is, I just picked it. It's perfectly fresh. There is, it's completely firm right here normally when you got a real serious frost damage it's going to start being squishy and you aren't going to be able to um you know it's it's probably edible but it won't be great but this is completely firm all the way through got a nice crunch to it you see that there's a little bit of uh textural issues on around the outside but it's just very minor and it still tastes spectacular um and so we've got a whole bed of these uh, fresh carrots and these were triple covered with row cover and through negative 32 I'd say that's a huge huge win so that's this caterpillar tunnel all right so now we're in the second caterpillar tunnel and basically all we got left in here is this hundred foot row of miners lettuce which has absolutely been flawless there is no frost damage on it at all all I did was triple cover it with row cover and it, the ground was frozen solid in here, probably eight inches deep at least, and no problems at all. This, the only reason this uh, miner's lettuce might look a little rough is because of the soil. It was, it didn't grow very well. There was some kind of nutrient deficiencies and stuff, and that's the only reason it looks kind of bad. And then this kale right behind me is also perfectly fine. It's just dormant. Um, so we're gonna water in here probably tomorrow. I'm working on getting my hose thawed out because it's kind of buried in snow and it got a little bit frozen, which is no big deal. I just got to get it in the sun because it's almost 50 today, which is why I'm wearing a t-shirt. Um, and so this is pretty cool too. This this miner's lettuce is going to explode in the next couple of weeks. It's going to be totally lush like a jungle and will have beautiful flowers on it pretty soon. I'm not even sure when that'll happen. It depends on how warm. Because the flowers on this particular plant show up when it goes to seed and it shows up in the middle of the leaf. I'll get you a close up here. Um, so <clears throat> this plant is mostly in this bed, it's all under mature because basically the soil is just not right. But uh, so most of the plants in this bed are under mature and that's basically because the soil in here is not quite right yet it's brand new um, basically just started growing in this in august but everything you see here is totally fine there is almost zero frost damage i mean it really is zero most of what the uh weird leaf color you see is because of rotting and basically just soil nutrition um, so I actually fertilized it this morning with some JLF, which you can Google what that means. It's a Jadam, uh, micro, or Jadam fertilizer that I use in the uh, middle of winter, but uh, it should start to grow back and hopefully that fertilizer will help it grow back a lot greener than it has because um, the first batch really didn't grow great. And if it did, we would add, oh, probably a hundred pounds of greens here for uh, the early winter and then the second cut, you know again, just like the spinach. It's a whole nother crop So pretty impressive uh, This went down to negative 32 ground was frozen solid eight inches and then over here We got the kale which as you can see looks pretty sad right now But as soon as this gets some water It's gonna start to spruce right back up and start growing from this growth tip right here and we'll have a pretty nice little crop of kale uh, later on in the winter all right, so now we're gonna go into the high tunnel, which uh, is a little bit better than the caterpillar tunnels, but not a whole lot. There's really no insulation around it or anything. It just actually gets a lot more sun. This thing gets so hot quick. Uh, in fact, I should probably start venting it almost today because I don't want everything in here to go to seed too soon. But basically what you got behind me is uh, all of that Tokyo Bacana salad I was talking about in previous videos. Uh, some mustard greens over there and then we got totsoy in the back and then a little bit of spinach that basically a bed that didn't germinate very well but it's growing like crazy right now um, and uh, all of this survived the negative 32 uh, not quite as well as I hoped I triple covered most of this stuff and the uh, 
the result was eh, not great. Um, I actually was hoping that it would have survived better. And I still think most of the reason that there's bare spots in these beds is because of rod. Um, this crop just grows so fast that the plants got so big, any little water droplets that uh, fell on them kind of rotted the whole plant, uh, especially in the center of the bed. So you'll notice most of the outer beds like okay, but the inner bed is uh, bare and that's because of rotting mostly but also whatever I, I also harvested most of the crop in here before the cold just like the spinach there was a little bit I tried to save but it didn't really work at all the plants were too big and they pretty much lost all the leaves but it still doesn't matter because I mean even from a couple days I can tell the plants are growing again that's the main thing there's still a ton of food uh, behind me um, I don't really know how much because I could tell the beds are not full at all, but it's going to be any kind of uh, crop we get is going to be awesome in March and February. So um, I'm not going to complain at all. And um, you could just tell by looking at the growth tips that there's a lot of life there in each plant. So I'll get you a close up of everything here. Um, so here's what it looks like close up so it, it looks pretty bad but if you look closely this is a this center of the plant right here is totally good and it's not really like I'm gonna harvest that right now but that is going to grow like crazy very soon um, now the, we are January 29th right now and our first 10 hour day is February 4th here in Wyoming so that's only like a week away and I'm pretty sure that plants are already growing right now especially with this nice sunny weather but I think it's going to be kind of cold and snowy that first week so I'll have to protect these but uh, the plants are definitely growing here's hot soy this uh, probably did the best because it, it seems like the smaller the plant the more tough it is for crazy cold um, this is probably gonna be ready to harvest soon. But as you can see, we still got quite a bit of uh, rotting issues here. That really isn't because of the cold. There was just, plants were rotting. So that's why the beds aren't very full. And this greenhouse does not have fans in it yet. I am sweating like crazy. This is so hot in here. I'm gonna have to start venting in here. Um, I ha I'm still kind of in winter mode and I haven't really thought about venting yet, but it's definitely time to start thinking about it because I think we're at like 55 degrees. Um, but uh, yeah, the most of the stuff in here will yield a second crop. I don't think it's going to be as abundant as the spinach, um, which is kind of a bummer, but I'm not too worried about it. We got some other stuff in the other uh, geothermal tunnel that will be uh, hopefully a lot more productive. It's I protected things a lot better in there and I actually did add heat to that one, but um, that's because I have a lot of microgreens and other things going on in there. So let's go there. All right, so now we are in our geothermal climate battery tunnel, which is basically my nursery right now. And as you can see, the plants are all much nicer in here, uh, basically compared to the other tunnels. But that's because I did add propane. Uh, I can't afford to lose uh, my nursery crops, all my microgreens going behind me. So I did add propane um, and I'm going to heat this house in the future anyway. So um, the combination of the propane and the climate battery kept it, I mean, it still got down to 17 in here. So I still triple covered everything. Um, so that means you still got it. You can't grow tomatoes in here during negative 30, you know, it's still uh, all frost hardy crops and it did flawlessly. I have almost no frost damage in here whatsoever. Um, and I've got cilantro, parsley, uh, this lettuce did fine. Again, number one problem with the lettuce is uh, rot. There's this uh, powdery mildew that I've never really had to deal with before because we don't really have much of problem with that here in Wyoming, but I know that it's kind of a humidity related thing and there's just like no evaporation at this time of year. So um, that's a new thing I'll have to figure out how to deal with in the future, but I still got quite a bit of lettuce in these, uh, you know, this bed and a half basically. Um, so just so you can see the quality of everything, you know, 
This is the cilantro. This is absolutely already growing back. I've already cut this whole bed once and it's gonna be ready to cut again any day now. I did water in here uh, about a week ago with drip irrigation and that helps a lot with keeping the rot down so you don't have plants rotting. This parsley, as you can see, is totally good. There's a little bit of, I'm pretty sure this is frost damage, which is weird. Uh, par parsley is supposed to be um, way tougher than cilantro. I don't know why I have a little bit of damage there and I'm, ho I'm hoping that's what it is. So I kind of have to pull these bad leaves away, but the growth tip is totally fine. We're gonna get at least one more cut out of this, maybe two, and that's a lot of parsley right there. Um, and then the spinach, uh, this I still actually haven't harvested at all. This is my last bit of spinach from the fall. Uh, and as you can see, there's a little bit of yellow leaves going on here. And again, I'm sure that's a soil thing that has nothing to do with the frost. Um, this is still very new soil. I haven't even been growing in it for well, basically over just over a year now, so it's still got a lot of work to do to make this really fertile. But uh, this Salanova, you, you can see it's nearly nearly good, nearly flawless. Um, you know, this is that powdery mildew stuff I was talking about, and it kills the plant. Um, if anybody has any idea how to deal with that, I'm all ears. I don't have a lot of experience with that one, that problem, because uh, what seems to happen is the, the plant will kind of rot at the core and just die. So this guy's probably gonna die. But hopefully we get a little bit more uh, before this stuff all goes to seed. And then over here we just got two more beds of spinach that I've already harvested. So all in all, uh, pretty amazing. Uh, and I'm thrilled with the results of all of our winter stuff. Oh, and one other thing, I got microgreens here. Uh, this is in a little low tunnel that I put in here that I do heat with an electric heater to keep it at least at 50 at night, although I could tell that's probably not good enough. I'm gonna need to start using the propane pretty soon to get this to roll, because we're about to start real plants soon. But this is a lot of uh, sunflower and pea shoots. Having some trouble with the sunflower shoots and this is like a farm mix, and I'm not really thrilled with that either, but the pea shoots are just exploding. We've got tons and tons of those, uh, and those are really popular at our market right now because we don't have a lot of greens, uh, so I timed that pretty well. But anyway, um, I'm really thrilled with how we've performed this winter. Uh, it has been a really, really warm winter, um, other than the Arctic blast we had a little while ago, which it seems like the whole country had some form of that. And, you know, for us, a negative 32, is it bad? Yeah, but it's not like, you know, everybody around here was pretty prepared for it. It's not totally crazy um, because we get the negative 20 every winter, so it was just a little bit colder than normal. I was just a little worried about certain pipes freezing and stuff, and I didn't really have any problems, just except for one little gray water drain thing. So, this is pretty cool. Uh, I, definitely the greenest I've ever had the farm look in January, and I know that it's gonna look a lot better as I get better at this whole winter thing, and because um, it just takes some practice, and the soil here is still very new, so next winter it should look twice as good. Um, and just getting through these crazy cold snaps helps build your confidence with producing stuff, you know, through the winter, literally. And, um, then by next month this place should look like a total jungle so i'm hoping that that's true um, at least in march i know it will be so stay tuned for that one and we'll see you in the next one